Hello guys, this is Flag coming at you from the sub-basement of Helix VR headquarters and today I'll be showing you how to use the in-game menu system in a set of Corsa in VR. For well over a year now, I've noticed that most of you don't know that you can access a set of Corsa's in-game menus without having to take off your headsets. I must have answered this very issue at least a half a dozen times in both Steam and a set of Corsa's official forums, and it wasn't until just a few days ago that my year-old plus thread got any attention from the community. I'm also extremely surprised to find that instructions to do so have not been officially provided by Kunos themselves, leaving many VR players of a set of Corsa to believe that they have no choice but to come out of their headsets to set up their events, choose cars, tracks, and more. Well, in just a few moments, I'm going to put all that to rest and not only show you how you can enjoy a set of Corsa 100% in VR without the need of third-party apps in a step-by-step -step fashion, but as a bonus, I will also show you how to do the same thing in a set of Corsa's content manager and point you in the direction of some of the things that I use myself to greatly enhance my sim racing experience. Let's get started. To start, I'm going to state the potentially obvious. You are going to need five things in order to benefit from the following instructions. You're going to need a copy of the PC version of a set of Corsa, a VR HMD, preferably the Vive or Oculus Rift, one touch controller, and a keyboard and mouse. Even though I'll be using the HTC Vive in this video, all instructions also apply to the Oculus Rift as both HMD's touch controllers have corresponding buttons that control everything covered. Step 1. Load Steam VR and put on your HMD. Pretty simple. Step 2. Within the Steam VR environment, push the Vive Controller System button to bring up the Steam Big Picture user interface and locate and run a set of courses. It is unlikely that you will find a set of course in your VR title list, so you will need to choose the Games or Install Games button on the left-hand sidebar and run a set of course from there. It should be listed somewhere at the top of the list that loads unless you have a ton of titles that begin with numbers. I just place a set of course in my favorites. So it makes it a little bit easier. Step 3. At the bottom of Big Picture Interface, you should see three or more circular icons. One says Desktop, another says Steam, and possibly a third or fourth will be labeled Revive and Advanced Settings. Click the one labeled Desktop. As an alternative, you can launch a set of Corsa from your standard des desktop Steam interface from here, though it's a bit harder to read. You will see the game load on the big picture UI screen in your Steam VR environment and will be able to use either your Vive Touch Controller as a laser pointer or your mouse to choose anything you need from the set of course of menu. As you can see, you can easily choose anything in this menu from car types, tracks, events, and settings all while in VR, no different than doing it with the headset off. Now choose your event type, car, and track and start your event. Step 5. Once you have started a race or other event, you will use the system button again on your touch controller to switch your view from the Steam VR environment to inside your, the car. From here, you will use your mouse to go into the car setup, start the event, and access the right-hand menu bar. Step 6. Once you're done with an event, to end it and go back to the main menu, Hit the escape key on your keyboard and exit using the menu there. I'm not sure why Kunos made this UI element available in VR, but not the launcher as Race Room did. But, you know, it is what it is. Once you've ended the session, you will use the system button on your controller to allow you to use the launcher menus once again. Be aware that if you have a wheel hooked up, you may have to continuously squeeze the trigger to use your touch controller outside of AC until it activates a certain controller's conflict with the touch controls after the end of an event. But this is not always the case. Now for the bonus. For those of you who use Content Manager by setofcorsa.club, you will find that everything stated earlier in this tutorial applies to it as well. 
I suggest that you add Content Manager to your Steam library as a non-Steam game and place it in your favorites so that you can load it from the Steam interface. For those of you who do not use Content Manager, don't know what it is. Content Manager is an alternative launcher for a set of courses that contains all the features of the standard launcher along with extended functionality with advanced options, speed, and usability. It is by far much faster, more powerful, and more convenient all-in-one alternative to the standard interface. With Content Manager, you have full control of all the official content, plus extended control over modded cars, tracks, and third-party apps such as RSR Live Timing and others. And for those of you who have experienced loss of sound or other such issues that break modded cars and tracks after a big game update, you will be happy to find that Content Manager in most cases remedies this by not only letting you know what mods are broken, but also giving you the option of fixing them from within its own interface in an almost automated process. You can also set up real-time weather, track day events, multi-class races, and custom championships along with championship seasons created and shared by others. When you launch a set of Corsa from the Content Manager, it bypasses the standard launcher and takes you straight into the event you set up. When you exit the event, you are brought right back into its user interface without ever having to deal with the end credit screen again. Content Manager is available at assetocorsa.club forward slash content manager. The link will be available in the description below. There is a light version available for free. There is no time trial, but it is with limitations. The full version is available for a name your price donation. I suggest that you give them the equivalent of $5 or more, but if you can't afford that, you can still obtain a full registered version for as little as $1. The developers are very dedicated to this project and updates are quite frequent, so if you like it, please show them some love and send them some money. For more information on mods and other useful sim-related items, check the description below. Well, that's all I have for you today, guys. I hope this tutorial helps you out. If it did, please drop us a line in the comments below. If there's something you don't understand or maybe I haven't explained very well, or just anything on any other sim-related questions, Please feel free to ask them in the comments, and I'll get back with you in a timely manner and do my best to help you out. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you didn't, well, hit that other button. Please help support us here at Helix VR and click that subscribe button and ring that bell to get notifications of when we drop future videos and so you don't miss out on our frequent VR game key giveaways. As always, guys, it's been a pleasure. Till next time. This is Flag, heading back to the basement. See ya.